Okay, I think we're good. We'll pop out the chat here. I guess I can close YouTube because it doesn't need to be open. Okay, hello everybody. Welcome to a look at some video game magazines. So, I've been looking through my game pro issues for a while and I figured I'd just do these online on, on the on the stream on YouTube, see if anybody wants to watch them. Uh, I haven't done one in a while, I think I did one last winter. Uh, so I'm up to game pro issue number uh, 77 from December 1995. You can see Donkey Kong Country is on Country 2 is on here. I also have a stack of older one, older game magazines from the 80s, probably 80s, early 90s. I'd probably look, take a look at. John, hey, hello, John. Good to see you. You got some magazines too? Well, I, I would love to watch a stream of that. I love that stuff. How are you doing? Just going through some game. This game pro issue I'm going through uh, looks pretty good. Um, I still have them from when I was a kid. I had most of the game pros. I got Nintendo Power up until I want to say uh, around when Aladdin came out on the Super Nintendo because that was my last issue of Nintendo Power. And then I switched over to Game Pro, and then I got Game Pro from then until I was I want to say 22, 21. So I have quite a few issues of Game Pro, and I have some old magazines from I picked up at the grocery store back then. So I hope you find this entertaining. Getting ironing done? Well, good luck with that. I don't can't remember the last time I ironed. Luckily, I don't have a job that really requires that, but we'll see. If I ever have to do it, hopefully that's like riding a bike and you know how to do it. Okay, so let's start here. This is Game Pro number 77 from December 1995. You see on the front, Donkey Kong Country 2, Yoshi's Island, Strategy Guide, Pro Reviews for Virtual Fighters Remix, WWF WrestleMania, Earthworm Jim, Mortal Kombat 3, Madden 95, Mega Man X3, Doom, for the PlayStation, which I heard is pretty good. I've never played it. I played the N64 one, which I love. I've been putting off ironing for weeks. It sounds like, uh, when I always had to do it, I always lived at home. So my mom always did it. So I never had to do it. Um, but uh, unfortunately, my mom, she'd do it, but I'm not going to bug my mom to do my laundry every time she comes down. So luckily, I don't have to wear, like, uh, shirts. Like I can wear t-shirts and stuff working from home right now, so that's good. They sure were. Mid 90s were a huge change for the industry. Um, if you see anything that you want me to stop on, let me know. Uh, the camera's not the best quality. Um, it's kind of fuzzy, um, but hopefully you can still make out stuff and I could be able to hold it up to the camera here. But we'll see what... Uh, this is from 1995, so this is a big turning point, like you said. Uh, changing into CDs for PlayStations out in Japan and the U.S. Coming out or out in the U.S. here soon. Oh, it is out now. So, Let's see what we got here. We got Diddy and Dixie Kong here with a Kremlin. 
I've got the pirate theme of Donkey Kong Country 2, a game which I beat just once, uh, maybe a few years ago. Didn't unlock everything, but it was a, quite a fun game. Some tricky stages, especially the one with the uh, honey. And here's an ad for that game here, Donkey Kong Country 2. Uh, I remember this ad quite a lot. Uh, my friend had the game, and I went. I played at his house, maybe when I was, um, would have been 16 at the time, and didn't play it until much, much later um, after that. And when I was like, I, like when I was 40 or so, I think I beat it last. And we had this ad's very nostalgic for me. Uh, this is Secret of Evermore, a game that I had I got because of the ad, I think, and because it had Squaresoft. Um, still have it. I beat it a few times, maybe one or two times at home, but never replayed it since I was 16 or 17 or something like that. I was actually thinking about playing through it again, but sometime, but I'm on the Star Tropics right now. Even though I beat Star Tropics, I'm kind of liking that game, so I kind of want to finish that. Very good ad. It has the dog, which I didn't understand, but there's a dog you can play as that is your pet. Uh, when you're in the game, you go into this mansion, into this laboratory that goes into people's dreams, the land of Evermore. You go there and your dog changes into different types of dogs. He's like a big, gigantic mutt at the first level of the jungle, caveman days. He's like a poodle. Turns into like a greyhound in different areas of the game. Yeah, you're right. It was the Ultra 64 up until it came out. I don't know when they actually renamed it, and but maybe we will see some information about that. Good. So you have the 3DO. My friend had a 3DO, Brett. Um, I played, he had a Genesis, a 3DO, Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Game Gear. I used to go over to his house a lot. And he had the 3DO when it came out, which was like $700 back then. I played Twisted. Uh, he had a, The Horde with Kirk Cameron, uh, Killing Time, uh, lots of games for it. So a lot of these games, not a lot of them, but I, I experienced a, a, a handful of them back when it was at, new. February 1996 is when they changed it. Thank you. I did not know that. I knew it was around, because it came out uh, August, September 1996, I think, wasn't it? If I'm remembering my dates right. Just the uh, stuff that I never read as a kid, but this is actually stuff that more interests me now more than ever. Uh, it tells about the publisher, the editor-in-chief, which I didn't know what all this stuff was. Um, basic credits for the magazine, your subscription thing, uh, tip line if you wanted to uh, call up for games, an ad for NFL Quarter Black Club 96, which this was for the Super Nintendo, or it looks like. Um, it's a pretty good graphics for the Super Nintendo, almost like a Mode 7, kind of reminds me of NHL Stanley Cup. And the features, we have the Game Makers Programming School. This is for DigiPen, which I remember DigiPen ads um, back in these magazines. It was like a school where you could go to design games. On the trail of Fox Hunt, Capcom makes an interactive movie a big screen production. So, I don't know what Fox Hunt is. Uh, I'd be interested to see what that is. I've never heard of that. Cover feature, Donkey Kong Country 2. We have Blockbuster Champs, Invade Game Pro, the winners of the Blockbuster Championship. Spend the day at Game Pro. Jim Davis explains how he helped his favorite cat make the jump from cartoon to Genesis game. So there's an interview with Garfield creator Jim Davis in here. Apparently, uh, there was a Garfield caught in the act game, which I never played on the Genesis. So uh, that would be interesting to see. Uh, Pro Strategies for Chrono Trigger, which just came out. Uh, part two of the strategy guide for Chrono Trigger takes you from the Fall of Magus to one of the standard endings. Pro Strategy Guide, like I mentioned, Super Mario Brother World, Super Mario World 2 Yoshi's Island, 160. Page 160 of SWAT Pro, Secret Weapons and Tactics, which was their tips guide, almost like classified information. And the Fighter's Edge, every month they'd have like a tips guide for fighting games, basically. There was a glut of fighting games during this time. Uh, Street Fighter 2 kicked it off, and it ran well into the N64 era, and it kind of pittered out after that. Uh, watch the N watch the Ultras N64 delays in in intently from a distance. I didn't have a description of anything at the time. I, I've heard of that card. Oh, you heard of that one? 
It's a seventh grader in 1995. It's completely all aware of country. Did I know? I did from um, Game Pro. Um, hopefully, was he that ad in here that actually picked me up on Chrono Trigger? Which I, because of that ad, I got the game. So I was aware of it. But if you didn't have a magazine, as he didn't, it's kind of yeah. That's the only way I knew how to how knew of it. Hey, Richard, welcome. Good to see you, my friend. How are you? How's everything? How's your studying going? Hope everything's well. That's a lot of questions. I'm sorry. <laughs> Yeah, uh, well, some of them, the covers, uh, these ones, some of them have stapled bindings, so some of the covers fell off of them, but I still have the covers, they're just off of them. And at the time, of course, yeah. Um, just from the magazines is how I knew of Game Pro mostly, is how I knew about Chrono Trigger. And I think I picked it up, I begged my parents for it, and I remember my dad brought it home from work one day, when I counted home from school. I was not expecting it, I don't think, and he, I told my mom about it, and he must, she must have had my dad... I pick it up after work, and that's how I got it. Pretty soon after release, and I haven't played it since the times I beat it back then. So we have the Maki Power to Perform. This is a, a cheat device. I guess a game saver. I'd never even heard of this. I think I remember it from the magazine last time, about last winter I did. So this is by Naki, a third-party peripheral. Apparently they made car power adapter, master switch, four-way universal TV game switch, basically an AV switch, a, a pad for the Genesis, colors for your Game Boy, uh, Basil, uh, Pro Fighter Stick for the Genesis, I believe that's a Genesis, and the Turbo Control Controller for the SNES and Genesis. Uh, so what this does is apparently from reading this, games that are too long, games that interrupt your favorite TV show, now you'll You'll rule with the Naki Game Saver Plus. I'm, uh, I'm apologizing if I'm kind of studying reading, but I'm reading this upside down because I can't flip my camera. Um, if I do, it'll be mirrored. So now you'll rule with Naki's Gamepad, the gamer's only backup system that saves any game anytime. So this is like a save state machine for your SNES. I had no idea uh, something like this existed back in the day. Um, I don't know why this wouldn't have um, intrigued me more. Because I would have remembered this had it intrigued me, but that sounds pretty neat to have save states anytime for a game. Now that sounds pretty good. Chrono Trigger would be fun to stream on original cartridge. Yes, since the cartridge is so rare and expensive now. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I think I started it back up on the DS, but I couldn't quite get into it, so I put it down, and, and I, I didn't get far enough. I was into the right when you get Robo, which so it's pretty early. Um, and that's a game I have to stick with. Um, that and a Link to the Past I have not beat since I got the cartridges back when I was a kid. Link to the Past, I begged my mom to take out a savings bond for it, and that's how I got that game. Um, Chrono Trigger, I explained. But they are due for replays. Um, maybe sometime. A lot of games, a lot of time. For sure. Okay, pro reviews. Let's, uh... I don't know if I should go over all these or just be surprised. I think we'll be surprised. They do have something about the Super Game Boy and Super Return of the Jedi for Game Gear. So those always intrigue me, the Super Game Boy special games. Um, I think it was you, John, who told me about a Space Invaders game for the Super Game Boy that had the actual Super Nintendo game on the system, on the cartridge. If you played the Super Game Boy, it actually uh, unlocked that game. I think you brought it over once and we played a little bit of it. Um, so maybe they'll tell us about some Super Game Boy features in those games. World Player's Realm, here's an interesting uh, feature. We have Secret of Evermore, a great game. Um, Romance of the Three Kingdoms, that's a uh, Koei game, like more a strategy like based on the actual history in China. Uh, virtual Highlights for the Saturn, Chrono Trigger Pro Strategy Guide Part 2, Future Fantasies from Overseas, Super Mario RPG, uh, Romancing Saga 3, which we never got, and Gun Hazard, which we never got. So you have your department's letter from the editor's mail, which will read some funny letters here. And I'm going to turn a light on. It's kind of dark, getting dark here. Yeah, I, I went through... Uh, 
uh, John on Chrono Trigger, I did all. I, I remember back then when I got the game and I played it back in '96 or whenever. I did all the all the endings I could find, and I maxed all my characters out to star stats and got all the rainbow weapons. Because I remember New Game Plus when I first found that out, it was amazing. I could go through and play the game again with all my stuff, which is uh, something that Dragon Quest XI does or XI-S does now. You can go through New Game Plus it, start over, keep all your items and everything stats from the beginning at any point, not just the beginning. You can pick what chapter you want to go back to, and start from there. So. It's pretty cool. Yeah, do you still have that cart? You still have that cartridge of uh, Space Invaders? Yeah, it was one of the a few SNES games had that feature, or I'm I'm sorry, a few Super Game Boy games had that feature, where they had special borders. But this one actually had the full SNES game in it. I remember you brought it over and we played it. I, Richard, I have not played more than a few hours of the game of the DS port. Um, I was tall and John, I um, played up until where I got Robo, maybe last winter or so, and I put it down. But I, I heard there is extra content. As to what it is, I'm not sure. I guess I'll find out um, if I play that. But if I played it now, I don't know. I, I might want to play it on the Super Nintendo, just to... I don't know, I'd rather play it on the console. Okay, we have um, ads for Levi's. Levi's had some good uh, jeans, and I do remember looking at these pants and wondering, that's the difference in the cut of the pants? So Classic 5, I don't know why I'm talking about jeans here, but this just, <laughs> Classic 505 is like a straight cut, relaxed is more baggy, and then loose is like super baggy, which was the style at the time. I had an onion on my belt, which was the style at the time. That's a Simpsons reference, of course. Um, but I always like the relaxed. When I get jeans, I wanted them a little bit baggy. Not too baggy, but baggy enough. And they compared them to dogs here. So post-game dungeons and areas. Extra and neat endings and super boss. Oh, a super boss, too. Have you played the DS port, Richard? I know it had cutscenes. Ah, uh, the Virtual Boy. I did not know anybody who had a Virtual Boy. I did pick one up a few years ago. Uh, it, it 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 was it broke on me. Um, so the problem with the Virtual Boy is the cameras will misalign, and you only see one side of the view on the camera. There's a cable in there that loses its solder. So I sent it away and planted Virtual Boy to a guy who fixed it for like seventy five bucks. It fixed it permanently for me, so I can play Virtual um, Wario Land again, which is why. I have that game in Mario Tennis. That's the only Virtual Boy games I have. But you see their ad here, a 3D game for a 3D world. So this is during Nintendo's Play It Loud era. They got into more of a attitude kind of thing, which is at the time I was like, why are you stooping to Sega's level? You know, um, there were some real gross ads. This one is not too gross. Um, it's more attitude. Like see the fonts all like all over the place. You got a guy like a 90s caveman here. Um, Telling it's showing some red alarm. Or Virtual Boy Wario Land, Mario Tennis, which came with it, and Tellero Boxer, which I never played, and I kind of want to play that because it's like Punch Out. Uh, Chrono Trigger DS had the same anime cutscenes as PS1 port. Oh, really? So I never played the PS1 port. I thought that was just for the DS. So they probably just took the PlayStation 1, one uh, uh, yeah, cutscenes and just threw them on there, and they. Uh, Compress them in the in the cartridge of the uh, DS. Interesting. Yeah, the Virtual Boy. You never you never seen one? Uh, I wish I could do a stream of Virtual Boy, but it's hard to do. You'd have to like have a camera to look in. I could do emulator, I guess. Play it loud work for Donkey Kong Country, but pretty much only that. They really dropped the ball marketing. Yeah, Yoshi Island had the big fat guy eating stuff. I remember the commercial. Um, so Richard. Uh, in the North, in America, in North America, they had a commercial for Yoshi's Island where, I believe there was a fat guy at a buffet table and he's stuffing his face, and they were like, "Here's some more," and he's like, "I couldn't eat, eat anymore," and he says, "Just one more bite, I think," and he blew up. I could be confusing that with another commercial, maybe a Kirby commercial, but I think that's what you're talking about, John. 
because uh, I don't remember the print ads for Yoshi Island. Yeah, my, my Virtual Boy did the same thing. I had to send mine away to get it fixed. It was like 80 bucks, um, but he fixed it permanently, so that won't happen again. Uh, that's too too bad yours uh, busted. Do you still have it? You don't own it anymore? Because you can't get it fixed if you don't mind spending 80 bucks on it. Go to Planet Virtual Boy and uh, place a request and the guy will get back to you pretty easily. He does good work. He even buffed mine up and cleaned it. Yeah, the Play It Loud campaign, I think at the time um, I was 16 or so and I just thought it was kind of lame. Um, but I think it worked on a lot of kids who were just young, a little younger than me. Because a lot of kids look fondly back on that era. Uh, people who grew up with the SNES uh, and N64. Maybe not the NES era, but the late SNES N64. They look fondly back on that era of advertising. So this is an ad for the PlayStation. Uh, still relatively new at the time. Uh, what game is this for? Uh, I'm not sure. Can't really see. It looks like a fighting, a space fighting game. It does not say what game it is. Maybe it was the one before this. No, nope, that's Virtual Boy. Purchasing power. So here's the letters section. Uh, people would send their uh, letters in um, for to be published, and you get some funny ones sometimes. So we'll see if we can find one. You have a letter from the editor, editor here. Um, this one's about purchasing power. Consumers don't always realize how much power they have if there's something they don't like, whether it's a movie, a TV show, a breakfast cereal, or a new tennis shoe. Consumers can always shout their opinions loud and clear on the companies that make those products. If they'd only lift, look ahead uh, 20, 20 years later to the internet and how that is abundance of what you hear on Twitter and everything now, it's insane uh, how this is almost prolific uh, uh, saying that. Um, so basically they're saying, um, where was I at? Those products don't simply don't buy that shoe, don't watch that show, don't go to that movie. Consumer protests like this happen all the time. Last summer, baseball fans effectively expressed their anger over 1994's baseball strike by staying away from baseball parks and look what savvy moviegoers got to the dreadful drudge dread. They turned Sylvester Stallone's big budget action flick into one of the year's biggest bombs. I kind of like Judge Dread. As for the unoriginal video game sequels that readers Steve Ziski, so we'll read his letter, talks about, see the letter to the right, software companies are making what they think gamers want, video game sequels are like movie sequels. They rarely break from a successful formula. So they're just, there's a letter, this guy, they usually pick one letter and they expand on it in the letters column here. So we'll read his letter here. Sick of sequels, this is by Steve Zish, Zishish, from Santa Rosa, California. He says, why are video game sequels always so un unoriginal? The first Bubsy was great, but a year later the second one was a bust. The coin-op Final Fight was great, the SNES version was good, but then Final Fight 2 and Final Fight Guy were identical to the earlier games. Can't companies think up original sequels? And they respond, sometimes they do see our editorial to the left, which I read a little bit about. You sold it to play emulated virtual games now? That's probably smart. Um, hopefully you got some good money for it. Even busted, I think you could have got something. Uh, I, I say it all the time, as long as the companies have your money, they don't care if you like it or not. Yeah, exactly, they're just companies. They're there out to make money. They don't care about you. They just want to do something that sells. So if people complain about it, they know that they can tweak it and fix it. They'll do it to make money. See, can we pick another level? Does the Sony PlayStation play CDs? Yes, as other CD-based game ma matches, match, yeah, match lines like the Neo Geo CD, Jag CD, Saturn Sega CD, and 3DO. I'm a Mortal Kombat 3 fan. How can I tell what version of the game I'm playing? 
You have to reset the arcade machine to find out. Ask the arcade operator, and he might do it for you. As the game restarts, watch the first screen carefully, and you'll see the number for the version you're playing. So that's about the arcade game. I thought it was about the quantum game. I bought the Sega CD hoping someone would make great games like Doom, Doom 2, or Wolfenstein 3D for it. Will these games ever come to the Sega CD? It's possible, but increasingly unlikely as far as disc-based systems go, Sega has clearly turned its attention to the Saturn. GamePro gets fewer and fewer Sega CD games to review each month, which isn't a good sign for the Sega CD owners. So yeah, this is the beginning of the 32-bit era. The Sega CD did not do too hot. They were moving on to the Saturn. Or reach around the back and unplug it for the Sega CD or the Virtual Boy or the... I kind of like the look of the Virtual Boy when you stare in it. It's really enveloping with the black and red. It's really does look nice. The pixel art's good, it's just a shame it's all in black and red. The Sony PlayStation ad on page 11 of your September issue has the words Enos Lives at the end. Can you please explain this? A spokesman for Sony says that Enos Lives is part of an ongoing marketing campaign that the company isn't ready to explain. The spokesperson did tell us there are lots of hidden codes and clues in their ads. In fact, on that same page is some wordplay that reads, you are not followed by a red E, as in you are not ready. Look at the street signs in the ads featuring ESPN's Extreme Games for some hidden codes and study the TV ads to find tricks or tricks for Battle Arena Toshinden. So I didn't know, I heard, remember you are not ready, but I didn't know there was like hidden codes in ads. Which is kind of cool. Oh, for Mortal Kombat 3? I never played that. I think I maybe when I played Mortal Kombat 3 once. Um, I played the original Mortal Kombat in the arcades uh, and Mortal Kombat 2 on the SNES. I don't think I played Mortal Kombat 3 in the arcades. Not a Mortal Kombat fan, I take it, John. In the Street Fighter movie, Blanco was turned into a monster. But the game, he lived in the jungle. Who's right? That's a good question. They both are, because they're two different things. Capcom says it had had to take certain liberties with their game characters in order to make the movie plot work. The movie wasn't trying to be a clone of the game. It was trying to exist in its own re terms with its own ideas, which require making some necessary changes to the game's premise as another example, you don't see Guile. Instead, Guile's, Guile's stealth boat in the game, but it made a sense to have it in the movie. So yeah, the Mortal Kombat movie I saw in theaters, and I liked it. I still kind of like it to this day. I know it's not bad, good, but I, I get enjoyment out of watching it. It follows the, the game well enough. Um, like they mentioned, Blanca's like a scientist, or and um, or Dulcim's like a scientist, and Blanca like it's like. Um, he gets turned into a monster, so starting out as one. Can you give me John claude Van Damme's address? He played Guile in the street film Street Fighter. Write to J J F S J C V D at this address, John claude Van Damme, 8942 Wilshire Boulevard, Beverly Hills, California, 90211. There you go. He probably has since moved, but might be worth a shot. Mortal Kombat 3 was a letdown. You aren't missing much, missing much. Never had the desire to see the movie. Oh, the Street Fighter movie, I liked it. It was good. I, I enjoyed it. I don't know how well it is now, but I haven't watched it in a few years, maybe 10 years or so. But I enjoyed, you know, if it's on, I'll, I'll watch it. It's enjoyable enough. These are all about Mortal Kombat 2. Let's see. Ah, uh, reader art. Um, so actually, the cool thing is, I don't know if these were real comments or not, but I got a few comments. Um, somebody actually said, that's my artwork. Um, can you send me a picture of it or something? And I've actually done that. One or two people have gotten in touch with my GamePro videos and said, hey, I found my artwork here, that's me. 
Um, do you have that, a scan you can make? So I'd scan them and send it to them, which is kind of cool. I don't know if that's real or not, but uh, I was happy to do that. It's kind of cool that they uh, found themselves. Is an ad for vir v VR Virtual Racing for the Sega Saturn. Saturn boxes were huge, gigantic, brittle, plastic beasts. So you have some nice artwork here, if you can see Chrono Trigger up here. Uh, this is a uh, Weapon Lord, I remember, a, a Super Nintendo uh, fighting game. Uh, Mario Fighter, you have Mario, because fighting games were the rage. A fight, looks like he's fighting... I don't know who he's fighting. I'm kind of looking at this upside down, so I don't see it too well. Looks like Santa Claus. Like a Santa hat? What is that? Primal Rage. Um, uh, Mortal Kombat 2, Raiden, Simpsons. Earthworm Jim fighter with uh, Liu Kang and Earthworm Jim. Lunar Eternal Blue, which that's a really good artwork. Um, this is from Anonymous. I don't know quite who that is. The uh, That is supposed to be of. And Mortal Kombat. Really good artwork. Uh, quite lots of talent. And if uh, this month's winner gets a free Game Pro t-shirt. The Nomad, Sega's Portable Genesis, The Cutting Edge, so this was coming out, so I, I guess it came out around 95, 96. Sega has another thought uh, thought coming for those who predict 16-bit games are going bye-bye. The Sega Genesis now shows, Sega Genesis show hits the road this winter with The Nomad, a new 16-bit portable game system. Well, it's re relatively new. The Nomad is a full-fledged Genesis system that will play any Genesis cartridge. This capacity, excuse me, opens up a hefty game library that uh, that currently stands at 600 cartridges. Before Christmas 1995, Sony, 30, sorry, 32X and Sega CD uh, fans, the Nomad won't support those Sega systems. So you'll have to con continue to power the Sega CDX if you desire portability. So the Nomad, I never even seen one. I think I saw one once, but I never played one. You could hook it up to a TV and play like a Genesis, which is kind of cool. Um, people do mod them and put better LCD screens in them now, because the LCD screen is from 1995, so it's not the best. Um, probably better than a Game Gear, I would hope, LCD screen. It was pretty big. It was like holding a brick in your hands. Uh, Power Rangers fighting game I've never played. I did watch Power Rangers a little bit. Growing up, just the first season with um, Rita and a little bit with Lord and Zed. Hot at the arcades, this is Game Pro's arcade, arcade section. Um, open Ice uh, 2 on 2 Challenge. Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3. Virtual Cop 2. Uh, fighter Fighting Vipers. The Mythical CDX. I have seen a Nomad. It's pretty large. Supposedly very bad at battle and a battle hungry. Yeah, the um CDX you, you could carry it around like a CD player. Um but I have never I never have saw one. Uh the Nomad I think I saw once. Um it'd be kinda cool to have, but there's really no need for it. Like you're not gonna carry that around. I mean maybe you would. I mean I'd like to take it to a park. Sometime, maybe, if I had one. Play uh, Earthworm Jim at the park. Uh, you have Marvel Super Heroes Tekken 2, Brave, Wait, uh, Brave Racer, Speed Racer, Cyberbots, Area 51, which I remember that one. So these are all arcade games. Yeah, it was battery hungry, too. I don't know how many what batteries it took. It probably says in the uh, it, uh, price tag at around $200. Same size as the 8-bit Game Gear. Slightly trimmer than Game Gear. Three and a quarter inch diagonally backlit LCD color screen. They don't say anything. Oh, it takes uh, the unit. Sega says six AA batteries will power three hours of gameplay. Marvel Superheroes in a fighting game? 
Oh, it'll never catch. Yeah. Yeah, how long? Yeah. That they it caught on for uh yeah, X Men versus Street Fighter, Marvel Superheroes, they had uh Marvel vs. Capcom, right? Yeah, it got really big. I have never played Marvel Super Heroes or Marvel vs. Capcom. Mad for a football game. Um, quarterback attack. I guess you play in the first person view of the quarterback, which is kind of unique. Just for 3DO? I guess just for 3DO. Uh, add for Toy Story. I've never seen Toy Story, but this is for the Super Nintendo game, which has like really different games of kinds of gameplay from what I've seen. Um, it has like a 3D rendered uh, and pixelized version, like Donkey Kong Country graphics. Um, pretty interesting looking game. Programming School. This is for the Digiten Press School. Uh, there's the President Claude. Homar, digital pens, digital pen, digi pens president. Uh, a student drawing storyboards in front of the class. Student Daniel Trail, Tyree, Tyrell, and Carrie Chaos, Ko discuss a new project. Look at that old computer there. A selection of early games made by first year students down here. Can't really see them too well, but. Marvel vs. Capcom 1 and 2 were great. I heard, I mean, yeah, I heard they were great. I, I've never played them. I, maybe I played it one or two on the arc. Not, not, not at the arcade, but maybe somewhere I played one. I can't remember if I did. Uh, we have, uh, uh, this is some more DigiPen stuff. Just early 3D graphics. Uh, some students there in front of the computer. Uh, we have a game for Quest for Fame for the IBM PC. NHLPA Hockey for the PlayStation. Fox Hunt. Hmm. I don't remember this movie at all. Did it even come out? Anybody who's ever visited a movie set would recognize that activity in a side prominent LA hotel last spring, Capcom and 3D Vision, 3 Vision, Inc., an independent movie company, teamed up to make Fox Hunt an inter interactive movie game set for release on the PlayStation and PC. Oh, it was an interactive movie game for the PlayStation. I wonder if that ever came out. Have you ever heard of that? I've never heard of that. So this is what's coming out for the PlayStation. PC state, space was changing rapidly with the introduction of Windows 95. See, I didn't have a PC until like 2003, so I missed all that stuff. Um, oh, scratch that. I had a, a Tandy back home, but I only used it to play King's Quest IV. I didn't do anything else with it. Um, so what was before Windows 95? Was it like Windows something, 3.1 or something? So this ad I always remembered with the butt cracks here. This is for a baseball game on the Virtual Boy. Virtual League Baseball. I always thought that was kind of gross. Can you collect the bot? If so, you're probably smart enough to figure that playing $149 for a 64-bit Jaguar makes sense than paying over $300 for a 32-bit system. So an ad for the Jaguar. I've never played a Jaguar. So I don't know what the games are like. And here's an interview with Garfield creator Jim Davis. And they ask him to draw the, um, I guess, the famous Game Pro rating systems in Garfield's faces here. Jim Davis created the Garfield back in the late 70s, having taken his persnickety feline from syndicated comic strip to TV. Davis has had um, barked into the 16-bit world. We caught up with Davis to find out how the new Genesis game and the cat are doing. And he even wrote a strip for GamePro. So here it is. I don't know if you can see it. It says, wow, GamePro says you have a video game. 
Garfield, you have a job. Yes, but I don't have to leave the TV besides beside my besides my agent said it would be good for my career. They, so they ask him, are you a gamer? And Jim Davis said, I like playing video games either on my PC or Saturn. In fact, I have Daytona USA going now. I'm, I'm no pro, but they're great, fun, and they, they help clean the cobwebs. What's next for Garfield? I'm looking forward to doing more Garfield games. The reaction to this first one is good. Probably go ahead with our plans for a sequel. So have you played that, John? Have you played Garfield Caught in the Act? I have never played it. I'm kind of curious now. Uh, in terms of gaming, most PC games were DOS with a few Windows 3.1 games. So DOS was still kicking around. And Windows 3.1 was the first Windows, right? Or was that the third one? I'm not sure. I, I, I My knowledge of PC games during that time is limited. I uh, never heard about the Jaguar, Richard. Uh, I was like Atari's last cartridge system. Um, I think I don't want to say cartridge home system. It, I've never played one, so I can't comment much on it. I mean, I know I know it has some has a reputation of not being very good, but I've never played it. Uh, some ad for Interact, these guys, I remember seeing their controllers. I do have a Super Nintendo controller, this one right here, in fact. It's okay. Um, I just always like the original controllers. This Handy Boy thing I always thought was the coolest thing, even though I didn't have a Game Boy. I always thought I wish I had a Game Boy to play that, to just hook up this thing to it. It had like a joystick, it had like a magnifier and two speakers that came out. It was really, really cool. So, subscribe to GamePro for only $19.97. Win a free game from GamePro if you fill out this form. You have a chance to win a free game. Uh, from the Blockbuster World Championships, we have the Final Four. Here they are right here. What does it take to become a champion? A world champion. Here's how Ricky Fraser and Leon Kane made it to the top. Try not to think about everything that's going on around you as you're playing. Just focus on the game, says Leon. Don't be nervous. I only got nervous if the final match because I knew that was my opportunity. opponent was a great player. Ricky adds, take each match step by step. You can't go in expecting to go win the whole thing. Be confident without being big, big headed. So I guess this is an ad here um, for Long Live the Super NES. Heck, you already own the machine. The old box ain't dead yet. Look for Capcom. So Breath of Fire, which I played that. I really like Breath of Fire. Um, it's a traditional RPG in the most sense, like Dragon Warrior. Dragon Quest. Um, really fun. My friend Bill had it, and I played it. I remember playing it at his place, and I borrowed it and beat it. Um, Mega Man X2, I believe, because that's X2's artwork. And Final Fight 2. Yes, Final Fight 3. No, that's X3. And this is Final Fight 3. And that's Breath of Fire 2. Wing Commander. I've never played these. Uh, this is for the PlayStation version, so it probably has full motion video. Mark Hamill and um, Andy McDowell, is that his name? The actors. Uh, Road Rash for the th uh, uh, 3DO. This is for the PlayStation version. Um, the 3DO version my friend had, it was fantastic. It had Soundgarden's music in it, uh, cutscenes. I just thought that was the coolest 3DO game. Doom for the PlayStation. So reviews, they gave it perfect sticking hair guys, excited guy, five out of fives for everything. 
I've never played the PlayStation version of Doom. I've only ever beaten the N64 version and played a little bit of the PC version. Another big Capcom 1996 SNES release was Street Fighter Alpha 2. I think I don't even think that was in the arcades at this point. Really? They released it before the arcades. I know that had loading. It used. It was an amazing cartridge because it had like loading times. So there was so much in it. Last Mega Man you played was ZX Advent. Really good game. I wonder why some series get abandoned like that. So Richard, ZX Advent was that more like a Metroid game? Like you, like you're playing Bloodstained right now? Is it like that where you kind of get powers to get to different areas? Because that sounds kind of cool. I think I heard it's like that. I could be mistaken though. Yeah, it was. Doom 64 is more like the real Doom 3, if they continued in that style of game. Um, it still looks and plays great. A little dark, though. you got to crank up the brightness. Um, um, I played on the N64 again maybe a few years ago, and it was still fun. Um, the music's very tense in that game. Uh, it was a completely different game, though. You're right. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I think Doom, 60, Doom SNES, John, if you had it, like, I didn't have a computer back then. If I had Doom for SNES, I would have enjoyed it, I think. Um, there's no really reason to play it now, except if that's the one you played as a kid for nostalgia, because you can get Doom on anything right now. Uh, so, uh, Mega Man ZX was very Metroidvania like exploration and finding upgraded both CX and CX app. Definitely recommend. Cool. I mean, yeah, I guess they do have to change it up a little bit, and that's kind of cool. I'm interested in playing that for sure. I think I have a copy of ZX, one of them. So that was the last one you played? There was a Mega Man 11 that came out, which was pretty good. It was more of the old style of the Mega Man games for the NES, which I liked. Never played ZX or ZX Advent, though. So apparently this is a really good port of Doom for the PlayStation. And like I said, Doom 64 was completely different, developed from the ground up, new game altogether. Mortal Kombat 3 got 4.5s across the board. And this is for the home version for PlayStation. Um, trading cards are really big back in the mid 90s. Um, these are DC superhero trading cards. They also had Marvel trading cards. Magic the Gathering was about to come out. WrestleMania for PlayStation, pretty. they really love this one. 5 for graphics, 5 for sound, 4.5 for control, and 5.0 for fun factor. Um, so, I did watch wrestling. I think my time watching wrestling was right at the end of Hulk Hogan, up until Stone Cold first started. Um, so I remember these wrestlers. Uh, Yoko, Yokozuna, um, he was like a sumo guy from Japan. Bret Hart, Bret the Hitman Hart. Doink, I remember Doink the Clown. The Undertaker, of course. Um, Bam Bam Bigelow, I remember. He was also in WCW for a while. Shawn Michaels, of course, the Heartbreak Kid. Lex Luger, the American Dream, and Razor Ramon. Uh, Criticom. Everything else is for more, more, mere mortals. I've never heard of this game. It's for the PlayStation, apparently. I don't know if you guys have heard of Criticom. Uh, this is the Interactor. You strap it to your back, and I think, if I recall, it, bump, it rumbles or something? Always remember to stay calm, strap Interactor to your back, plug it into the game system, and continue playing normally. For extreme cases, use a higher level of intensity. May cause excitability. Do not use as a parachute. Well, thank you. I've never seen one of those. I do remember this, though. It adds for it. Agile Warrior F11X. For the PlayStation. I never heard of that game, either. More trading cards. Ace Combat for the PlayStation. Got average reviews, 3.0s. Um... What is this game? Nova Storm for the PlayStation. These are very early PlayStation games, so a lot of them were in those long boxes, I think. Spawn, which was really big comic book time at the time. 
Uh, Spawn, this is for the Super Nintendo. I've never played that. I think it's like a brawler. You remember the Interactor? I have vague memories of it, too. I just didn't know any... I never saw one. Or knew anybody who had one. I mean, my friend had a lot of stuff. He would have... I don't think that was even into his wheelhouse. Uh, Tekken. This was a big fighting game back in the time. Early 3D fighters. Speaking of that, you have Virtual Fighter for the Saturn. Got eh, 4.5s across the board, I think. Uh, Virtual Fighter Remix. Got pretty much the same, except the graphics were better. I'm not a huge fighting game fan, so I'm kind of skipping through these pretty fast. Gex, my friend had this for 3DO. I played maybe the first level, that's it. Um, I'm kind of curious to actually play through it, if I can find it um, sometime. I would like to play it. I don't have it, but man, there's other ways you can play it. Um, Rayman for the Saturn. Um, I've only played the original Rayman on Game Boy Advance, and it's pretty tough. Um, I, I played Rayman Legends and Rayman uh, Origins, which are excellent games. Great 2D platformers. Highly recommend them if you like 2D platformers. Um, but I haven't played much of the original Rayman. I never played it on the Saturn or PlayStation. Final Fight 3. Very fun game. The thing about this game is you can play two players at any time. The other player is controlled by the computer, which is kind of cool. It has moves like Street Fighter with button inputs, which are kind of cool. Uh, there's like four playable characters. Um, I think it's like Dean, Lusa, Mike Hagar, and somebody else. Oh, a guy, I think. Dark Legacy for the Saturn. Minnesota Fats Pool Legend. An ad for Rayman. We played the Dex uh, Gex One demo on PC. It was included on a free demo disc. I was more into its sequel, Enter the Gecko. Enter the Gecko. Was that on N64 too? Because I have a Gex for N64. I don't know if it was called Enter the Gecko. Mansion of Hidden Souls for the Saturn. I've never heard of any of these games because I didn't really have a Saturn. Um, other friend did. Shanghai Triple Threat. It's a Mahjong game, I think. You have this nice big ad for America Online. I'd like on America Online for free. Um, Evolve, get it with now on America Online. I guess you send this in, they send you a kit to get started on floppy disks. Um, there's a little picture of an old web page from 1995. You can see it. Some more web pages, how they looked like back then. I did not experience the web during this time because I didn't have a computer until like 2003. WWF WrestleMania, the arcade game. Colibri for the uh, Sega 32X. These are 32X games. Colibri is like a shooter that you play as a hummingbird. Never played that. Um, heard good things about WrestleMania, the arcade game. Wild Cards, Jim Lee's Wild Cat, Cart, uh, Wild Cats. It's like a comic book series. It was for N64. Hey, Gex, okay, I have Gex 64, and I also have one where it's like Undercover Gecko or something. Gex 3, that one I have. Oh wait, I think I have that for uh, N64. I might Gex 3, because I have two Gex games. So it'd be two or three. Yeah, AOL telling you to involve. Apparently, I don't have any, like, maybe you had, you guys had the internet back then, but apparently you used time, five minutes to go online for? I'm not sure how it worked. Before, how to get online for anybody who didn't know how to, like people like me, until people like you knew, knew it in another way. Yeah, I, I, I had a candy computer growing up. Oops, I'm kind of cropping off the screen, sorry. Um, but I only had it, it was like DOS. It was a Radio Shack brand computer. Um, and I had one game for it, King's Quest IV, which is what I used it for. But it was always confusing to me, like you had to type stuff, enter it to run the game, it was weird. And I didn't get a computer proper in, until like 2003, 2004. 
Zoop, this game is actually pretty fun for money here. You hear this little arrow that shoots different color arrows, and you got to match three to break it up, and they're all around the board, and it gets faster and faster. They rise up or down or left or right, and you got to beat them before they hit the center, I think. Gargles. Um, uh, the cartoon's pretty good. I think I saw one or two episodes. The game is pretty good. I did beat the game on easy. Um, it took me a long time to beat it on easy. I don't know if I have the patience to do it on normal or hard, because um, the last boss was very tricky. Um, uh, it's very hard to describe the control in this game. It's very bad until you get used to it. Uh, here's the Garfield Cottonyak game that um, Jim Davis was excited for. Uh, they didn't quite like it. Uh, you see they gave it 3.5 for graphics, 3.0 for sound, 2.0 for control, and 2.05 for fun factor. Ouch. Novices, novices are Garfolk's target audience. The proof is in the rep, rep, repetitive gameplay. The two difficulty levels, one called Kitty and the other Normal. Whether beginners will be patient enough to overcome the controls is another question. Had Garfield been given better abilities, even veteran players might have enjoyed playing with him. But as it stands, as it is, they'll probably want to be put this cat out. Wow. They did not like that game at all. Here's an ad for soup. You start on your dad's Macintosh SC. One of the all-in-one black and white models. Wow. Didn't have a proper PC until 1997. Um, yeah, I, I played, I did pl use Macintosh, or Apple IIs in heights in grade school. Um, showing my age here, but um, we did have the computer lab with Apple IIs. There was like a room you have to go into. You had like a, a it's basically a class like history. It was called computer lab. And you go there and you do typing and stuff. And there was a room full of big, those big, tables, foldable tables or something, um, maybe not foldable, but they were set up for, you know, 20 Apple IIs or whatever, um, and people would, I think we played Oregon Trail and Number Munchers on them. Batman Forever, um, I heard it's bad, I haven't played it, um, and they think it's kind of bad too. Mega Man X3. I've never played this one. I did like X1 and 2. I beat those two. Um, fun games. If X3 is anything like X2, 1 and 2, it's probably good. Well, I know it's good. It's Mega Man X. I think all, all four, the first four are widely considered very good. You had Apple IIs in school, too? Yeah, I remember them. The big gray things with keyboards jutting out. You put the monitor on top. Yeah, Oregon Trail and Number Munchers? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we're about the same age, so yeah, you understand that. I remember Oregon Trail being afraid to cross the rivers because my wagon would tip. And I had fun with number munchers. Here's an NBA game, NBA Live 95 or 96? 96. And here we have the Afro Munch in Donkey Kong Country 2 on the title, on the front page, I should say. Um, they loved it, they gave it perfect fives out of fives. Nintendo and Rare aren't monkeying around. Diddy's Conquest exceeds the standard set by Donkey Kong Country. This is the game you want under your palm tree this holiday. So I loved it. Um, I always thought it was weird they called it Donkey Kong Country, but Donkey Kong was only playable in the first one. Um, that's why I think I kind of like the first one the best out of all three that I played, just because you can play as Donkey Kong. But I think 2 is arguably the better of the game, the first two games. I just wish you could play as Donkey Kong. Yeah, same here. I, I I didn't play these until much later. I think I like I said I my friend had this and uh, I played it at his place. Um, I didn't really get into it then, um, but I did like it. I think I wanted to play other games he had because he had a lot of games. Uh, the first one I liked because he could play Donkey Kong, and the third one's fun too. The third one they really mixed it up with like an open kind of world. You can go in like different ships. Go around the different boards. It's kind of cool. You can go in like a hovercraft and stuff. Um, yeah, the honey level. I remember that level. 
I hated the levels with squawks. Did not like them. Earthworm Jim, a game I have never... I, I keep saying, well, this is Earthworm Jim 2. The first Earthworm Jim, I find very hard. I can only get to the stage where you're in the sub. I had, To be fair, I haven't put much time into it. Um, I would like to play through that game, the first one at least, sometime. Because what I played, um, it's weird. It's one of those games where you don't know where to jump at first until you learn the levels. A lot of the shiny games like Aladdin, Disney's Aladdin for Genesis, the levels are kind of not intuitive of where you can jump to and stuff. So you got to kind of like learn the levels. Um, so this is a sequel to Earthworm Jim. They gave it pretty good reviews. 4.5s across the board. Graphics, sounds, control, and fun factor. Yeah, I've heard Donkey Kong Country 2 is the best of the series. Um, I've played all three, and I still like the first. I think probably the best. You played Earthworm Jim 1 on the PC. The sequel is not as good. I've only played the first one, never played the second. Like, I didn't know it was out for PC. Final Fight 3. This is a very fun game. I did beat it. Uh, I should play it again. Um, there's so many games like I'm playing. I want to play. I'm playing. I want to get through, and it's hard for me to justify going back and playing this. Um, but I, I do want to play this one again because I remember I just went through it, and there's a lot to this game. There's a lot of moves you can use, like Street Fighter moves. There's four characters you can play two-player co-op. The second player can be a computer-controlled character. It's pretty fun. Mega Man X3. Um, I only played 1 and 2. I have never played 3. They gave it pretty good scores, 4.5s across the boards. Mega Man fans who were put off by the QT Mega Man 7 can breathe a sigh of relief with Mega Man X3. This card won't win any awards for gameplay innovations, but it's still a worthy installment in the 16-bit series. Earthworm Turn Gem 2 was weird for its own good. Wow, that, I mean, Earthworm Gem 1 was pretty weird, so it was weirder than 1? Wow. That's saying something there. I can't imagine it being weirder than 1. Now I've expected X2 or X3 to be received so well. I thought they were, I mean, X2 was really fun. And X1 was fun too. This is the spawn game we saw an ad for. Zoop for SNES, Mech Warrior. Um, here's the redesign of the Panasonic 3DO. The, uh, this is the Panasonic one, not the Gold, there's also a Gold Star one. This is the pa second generation Panasonic one, instead of a Disc loader, it had the top loader. There's an ad for co uh, Scramble Cobra. It's like, a, I guess, a flight sim game with helicopters. D for the 3DO. They loved it. Um, great scores across the board. This is, from what I understand, a horror game. With the gameplay mechanics of the seventh guest, mist-like puzzles, and fantastic rendered graphics. D is the best in interactive adventure for the 3DO. And while the what makes D stand out are great cinematics and a very engaging storyline. As in M Mansion of Hidden Souls, you uncover clues and unlock doors, find more clues, and proceed. The puzzles range from simple, remembering the order of animals on a carousel, to complex, knowing the symbols for the signs of the zodiac. You won't even need a manual to work with the easy controls. Laura starts out with nothing except a clock and a com compact. The clock counts down the remaining time and the compact will yield three clues if you're stumped before it self-destructs. But Laura will find other objects and interact with her surroundings to uncover the mystery that is her father and that is her father and she'll learn she'll team a little learn a little about herself in the process. So yeah, sorry that's a little I'm kinda of reading it upside down so it's kinda of hard to read. I think that's a horror game though. So wow they really just cram these four three DO games into quarter size of the page reviews. Uh, 
Crime Patrol 2 Drug Wars, that's probably a shooting game like Lethal Enforcer's Mazer. Um, don't know what that game is. Never heard of Mazer. A frustrating addictive game that alternately makes you want to cheer in triumph and stomp your 3DO to pieces. Sounds like a fun game. Panzer General, a strategy game, turn-based strategy game. Probably like Advance Wars or something. Uh, Flying Nightmares, which uh, uh, flights him. Iron Angel of the Apocalypse, The Return. Directed by Kusakabi for 3DO. Hmm. Maybe a full motion video game, as they say, directed by Pulse Star for the Neo Geo. I've never heard of that. Here's an ad for Weapon Board. Uh, the SNES um, game where you can play with X Band modem. There's an X Band symbol down there. So basically, um, X Band modem was for Genesis and Super Nintendo. It was a modem that plugged into your cartridge slot, then you put the game on it. It had a phone line that came out of the modem. You plugged in and you would pay a monthly service for minutes, and you'd go online and you'd fight multiplayer games that were compatible to it. And Weapon Lord was one of them. You had like a screen name, and you could fight other players around the world. Over 56k. John Madden NFL 95. Vector Man. Eon Primetime goes primetime with primetime NFL football. FIFA and FIFA 96 schools the NAS competitions. FIFA 96, pretty good read. So are these two different games? Oh, one's for Genesis, one's for Super Nintendo. Just different ports, I guess. So yeah, actually they like the Genesis one a little bit better. They get actually this graphic, the sound better on the Genesis. I've never played Vector Man. I think it's like a shooting game, like Contra, but with different, with cool graphics. You only made it a few levels in. Oh, we're coming to the ad that it got me to buy Chrono Trigger. Here's the ad I remember Chrono Trigger from. This is why I got the game from this ad. Because I played Final Fantasy IV, Final Fantasy VI, um, Secret of Mana, and I knew Squaresoft. Um, I liked the artwork a lot. This artwork always spoke to me, because I and I didn't find out until later. It's because Dragon Ball Z, Akira Toriyama did the artwork, and I, when I watched Dragon Ball Z back when I was in late high school, when it came on real early in the mornings, um, I found that artwork very cool too. And I didn't find out later that he did the artwork for that too. Um, but this this ad was really cool. From the creators of the acclaimed Final Fantasy series, character designed by Kiri Toriyama, 32 megs, 10 endings, 70 plus hours of gameplay. I just remember seeing these pictures and thinking, wow, these graphics are amazing. So here's the Secret of Evermore. I really like this game, I have it. Um, had it as a kid. They gave it 3.5 for graphics, 3.5 for sound, 3.5 for control, and fun factor 4.0. So pretty good overall average. Um, there was a system where you found items to make alchemy spells. So your spells were based on um, consumables you found around the world that your dog could sniff out to find. So to use your spells, you'd have to constantly kind of keep finding them. Um, it wasn't too bad because they were readily available. They gave you enough um, if you just use them the, normally. You'd be okay. Um, if you haven't played Secret of Evermore, if you like Secret of Mana, it's different than that, but the, the ring system is still there. Um, you don't have three players, you have just yourself and the dog, and the dog can be very useful. You can like control the dog, I think, by hitting select. I'm not, I haven't played it in a while. Um, you go through different time periods and your dog like mutates into different kinds of dogs. Um, the music's outstanding, it was done by Jeremy Soule, who did the, um, I think, uh, one of the Elder Scrolls games, I believe. Could be mistaken. Uh, the music's 